Good evening and welcome back to the coffee bar in my home. This is Joseph Brewer and we're continuing our discussion on my book, A Practical Guide for True Cheshires and Greeters. Tonight is part six and let's jump on into it. So tonight we're going to start uh, discussing the head usher and um, as the head usher, you are a leader. Um, sorry, my glasses are falling down. Um, you have an amazing yet challenging opportunity. Um, so first and foremost, be prayed up. Um, you can't do it without God blessing you. So, um, you know, plan to pray with your ushers when you see them later, but you need prayer yourself for, um guiding those uh those folks so make sure you're prayed up um before you ever get to church make sure you're prayed up and you're ready for the day and um, that's that's probably the most important thing you can do as a head usher is being prayed up um you're going to have ushers who are going to fail from time to time and we, we, you know, obviously we want to limit that as much as possible, but keep in mind that um, even the apostles who were Jesus ushers failed. Um, they failed when they withheld the children from going to him. So keep it. At, everybody's going to fail from time to time and use it as an opportunity to learn um, an opportunity to grow uh, maybe an opportunity to make changes to your procedures and how you do things. But um, when your ushers fail, you take the hit for that. Um, it's on you because you're the head usher. So you take the hit for it um, and you try to learn from it. And if uh, if it doesn't have to, if the person doesn't need to be personally pointed out uh, for that failure, then do it in a generic fashion for everybody. Um, don't single out the one person and embarrass them. Now, I do think there are times where people will do things that um, if it's done publicly, it needs to be undone publicly. But um, I, I haven't had to do that in the, gosh, how many years have I been doing this now? Uh, 15 years as head usher. I haven't had to do that. Um, I haven't had to single anyone out um, and embarrass them in an usher's meeting. So um, as things happen, um, learn from them. And then just, you know, like I said, generically um, bring it to the attention of the other ushers, all the ushers in your group meeting. And, and if it's something that is, that's necessary, go talk to that individual usher um, in private, try not to embarrass them publicly. If you can um, help them guide them, that, that's, that's your job is to uh, guide them and to um, help them to be the best usher that they can and to maximize their ministry. So uh, watch out for them and help them. Um, when you're choosing new ushers now um some churches you may not get to choose your ushers they may be chosen by your pastor or um i don't know maybe somebody else but if you have the opportunity to choose your ushers um look for somebody who's coachable somebody who you know you can talk to them and and they will listen to you they will make the necessary changes um if you have somebody who's you know, cocky and arrogant and will not listen to you and you can't coach, they're probably not right um, to be an usher because if they have those characteristics, they probably don't have a, the right temperament to be an usher either. Um, and, and then you want somebody who's faithful. Um, you want somebody that's going to be there um, when the doors are open, when, you know, so that they can effectively um, execute their job as an usher um, in your church's ministry. So uh, faithfulness is 
critical. It, it really is. So, um, you know, look for faithful people. Again, like I said, temperament. You don't want somebody who's, um, you know, going to fly off the handle and start yelling at somebody uh, because they didn't sit where they suggested they sit. Uh, you want you want people who can um, smile in the face of adversity as much as possible, and um, you know they're they're going to be. What's the word I'm looking for? Um, well, it, somebody who ah, there's there's a term I'm looking for, but let let me think. Let me go on to something else. But you don't want somebody who's going to um, make people uncomfortable and happy-go-lucky. You know, happy-go-lucky, uh, you know, as a term, but they also have to be ready to step up if there's a threat. So, you know, you want to look for somebody who's going to be friendly and engaging and, um, you know, not always angry and always with a frown on their face um, or somebody who's yelling at people. So watch the temperament. Um, having larger stature ushers um, in itself is something of a deterrent um, when it comes to security. You got a bunch of big guys um, and you have somebody come in that's considering, you know, starting some kind of issue or trouble. They're liable to think twice before they, uh, before they do it. So, you know, larger guys might be a good pick for you. And you also want to make sure that they're willing um, to dress the part. Um, now, for us in my church, uh, my ushers wear suits, white shirts or light blue, and a tie. So, and, and the way I see it is that's our uniform. Um, if you working a job, um, you know, if the company says, hey, this is your uniform, this is what you're going to wear, well, well you're going to do that, um, you know, for your paycheck. Well, why wouldn't you uh, dress the part that's asked of you um, when you're serving God? Um, it just, to me, it seems like a no-brainer. I'm not a suit guy. I don't, you know, I'm not somebody who likes wearing a suit, but that is, um, that's the dress for um, my part and that's that's what I do so um, so you want somebody who's willing to do that now I had an usher who couldn't afford to go out and buy a new suit so he went to thrift stores he went and he bought his dress shoes at a thrift store he bought a suit at a thrift store um, thrift stores are great resources for those if you need to so and no shame in that um, I've purchased suits at thrift stores, secondhand stores and things. So um, it, it just makes sure that they're willing to dress the part when, you, uh, um, when you're bringing them on as an usher. And, and they should have already been demonstrating that um, as part of their faithfulness um, as you're choosing an usher. Uh, something else that I personally find to be a blessing is my weekly ushers meeting. Now, I know not every church, not every group can have a weekly ushers meeting. If you can, uh, I, I highly recommend it. It's, uh, it's a great opportunity for me and my ushers to spend some time, and greeters, to spend some time together. I only plan it for 15 minutes and, and we're frequently done in around 10 minutes but during that 10 minutes we've had an opportunity to continue that bond that we've been building over the years um, it's our opportunity to greet each other poke jabs at each other um, you know have have a little bit of fun together um, and then um, I give them their assignments for the week and I always ask if there's anything we need to go over, because I don't see everything that goes on. And I need to know, did somebody see something someplace that we need to uh, come up with a solution for? So um, ask, you know, ask your guys, hey, 
Um, you know, did anything come up that we need to go over? Um, but if you can have that ush weekly ushers meeting, that's a great time uh, together. Now, I, uh, I, I really covet that time. And it's a time that um, I didn't want any interruptions. Uh, that was our time. That was me, my ushers, my greeter. I didn't want anybody else hanging around or doing things. Well, one of my ushers brought his um, child to the ushers meeting. My knee-jerk reaction was I didn't like it, but um, I always like to think things over, ponder them, consider them, and not just be reactionary. So I spent a couple weeks thinking about it, praying about it, and I realized that what a great opportunity that actually was for that child. Um, that child um, showing up at the ushers meeting with their father um, or um, one of my greeters um, brings her uh, nephew, I believe it is. And, but that child gets to see adult Christians and you know, for us, it's mostly men, but gets to see us interacting with each other, gets to see Christian men being men um, and, and see the, the poking jabs at each other and, and playing around a little bit and um, seeing how we interact with each other. And I realized that at that moment, because there's, you know, prayer meetings not going on or anything like that, there's no better place for the, um, the children of those ushers to be than right there in that ushers meeting with us. And I, oh, I love that... Um, he brought his his kid to the uh, uh, to the ushers meeting, and I love it when they bring their children to the ushers meeting. It just, um, like I said, I just I think it's I think it's critical for those kids to to see that because there's so much that tries to make men, <laughs> um, aside from Christian men, look foolish um, out there in the world, and it's an opportunity for us to kind of set the story straight. And um, so if you have that opportunity for a weekly ushers meeting and you have the opportunity um, for your ushers to bring their children, their grandchildren, nieces or nephews, whatever. Um, wow. What an opportunity to just witness, you know, adult Christians together um, being faithful and, um, you know, bonding and talking and, um, anyway, it's, uh, I, like I said, I, I, once I, you know, once, once I prayed about it and, and God gave me that understanding, um, wow. Um, I just, I love it when they bring their kids to the meeting. So it's just one, it's another little benefit of having a weekly, um, ushers meeting, just, you know, that 10 minutes for those kids to watch the adults. Um, and, uh, anyway, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, I just, I really do. I love it. Um, it's an opportunity for you to praise your ushers. Now, um, last week I brought uh, some uh, pumpkin spice strudel or something like that and some coffee uh, for my ushers. And I thank them for their uh, faithful, faithfulness to the ministry um, and that I appreciated their faithfulness to the ministry. I, and now I realize that um, they're not there to serve me. They're there serving God. But as the head usher who relies on them and depends on their faithfulness in order to um, discharge my duties, I appreciate that they're faithful. I appreciate them being there um, and and cooperating and doing the things that, you know, I asked them to do. Um, so as the head usher, it's okay to praise your ushers and thank them for being there, for being faithful. Um, everybody needs to know they're doing a good job. So it's just, it's one more little thing. And again, if there's kids there, they get to see that as well and experience that. And, you know, at the close of your ushers meeting, lead your ushers in prayer. Um, pray for them for the day because they're going to need it. 
you're going to need it. Um, the preaching, you know, pray for your pastor, pray for the preaching, pray that guests, you know, you, that your church house is full of guests, that, you know, God watches over you and protects your church and your ushers. So leave them in prayer before you're done. And uh, anyway, if you can have that weekly ushers meeting, it, it's a great opportunity for bonding. Um, in protecting the testimonies of your ushers and um, not allowing for anybody to make accusation, make sure that you keep, have at least two people um, always with the offering. Um, when your usher takes up the offering, make sure that there's always two of them together or three um, and that they're not off by themselves um, with the usher, with the offering. Um, it, you're just protecting um, their testimony and protecting that, you know, nobody can make accusation. Uh, for us, the offering stays in the building. It never leaves the building. So uh, we take up our offering. The ushers go down to the front. Our pastor prays for it. Then they take the offering over uh, to another area inside the church. And um, then it's put away. But it's always in plain view of everybody. Everybody sees where the offering is going. Everybody sees how the ushers have handled it. And um, so there's no room for accusation against an usher for, um, you know, for handling the money. So just, again, protect your ushers, protect their, uh, their testimony. Um, you're going to want to maximize the ministry of your ushers. Um, it, look for ways to do that because you want them to have an impact for the cause of Christ. You want them to make a difference in people's lives. Um, it's an opportunity for them. So look for ways that you can do that. One of the ways that we do that is I rotate, I have six positions inside my building for ushers. I rotate them around the auditorium. Um, that serves many, um, many things. They know um, how each position is filled in case uh, I have an usher out that's sick. Um, everybody knows how to usher um, any one of those six positions in my church. Um, I have a couple of, of my ushers that are in the choir. So I place them strategically so that when after the offering is taken that they end up on the side where the uh, choir gathers so that they can get to the stage um, when they're supposed to and without a lot of confusion uh, it little thing again um, but little things add up to making a difference so um, also as you rotate your ushers around the auditorium it gives them an opportunity to meet maybe different people because you may have, you know, everybody has their favorite spot in the auditorium after they've been there for a while. Um, so if you have an usher that is um, stuck in one area all the time, they're going to miss out on talking to people, seeing people, being a blessing to people in the other part of your building or in another area of your building. Uh, so rotate them around so they can get to know other people uh, so they can interact with other people and also just so other people see them serving um, it's that's important too now while they're doing that it also affords them an opportunity to see maybe different needs and um, so it uh, you know if they're on you know, the right side of the auditorium, they see the needs over there. Well, maybe there's a different need on the left side of the auditorium. You know, like for us, our the left side of our auditorium is uh, where the uh, uh, ramp is. So over there, they'll see the need to um, assist folks who need assistance getting inside the building. So maybe they'll come up with a better plan. Maybe they'll see something that... Um, will help the ministry overall in, um, in in helping people. So, you know, it's just, it's and it's a way to maximize their ministry. 
and they'll also learn different aspects of the ministry. It may sound a little um, strange, but like for us, um, on the left side of our um, auditorium, they'll get to see my pastor um, coming in and out of his library or his office, and they'll get to probably spend a few more moments around him than those on the right side of the auditorium. And so, you know, and so they'll get to see the things that um, he has to do when he gets there. He'll, they'll have the opportunity to um, see what the, uh, um, maybe the music director and others or the choir, the things that they're doing. And it'll give them a different perspective and they'll see different aspects of the ministry by moving them around. Well, all of that serves to maximize um, their ministry as an usher. They'll be more effective. And, you know, you, you, want, you want them to be as effective as possible. Like, you know, like I said, it, their ministry is about serving um, Jesus and it, it's about the cause of Christ. So look for ways to maximize that with them and to benefit them and to help them out. <clears throat> And on that, you also want to train your ushers. So me, I have an eight-week training program, basically. <clears throat> Pardon me. I have the six positions, like I said, in, inside my church, but I have positions outside also. So when I have somebody new come in, the first thing I do is, well, now I give them my book. I used to give them a different book, but now I give them my book, and I ask them to read it. And while they're uh, reading the book, if they have any questions, I, you know, I, I tell them, you know, if you have any questions, come talk to me and I will follow up with them to see if they have any questions. Um, you don't want them to feel like, um, you know, we're just throwing them out in the deep end and, and letting them go. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so I have my usher shadow the other ushers that I have, my new usher that I bring on board. Um, I have them shadow the other ushers that I have and each of the different positions. And I put them with different men so that they can learn through the various experiences of these other men um, on how to usher. And I, it's, it, I find it to be very beneficial for them um, in training them to give them opportunity with all of these other ushers. And so it's an eight-week program. And then I ask them um, if they're ready to um, go ahead and begin um, flying solo on ushering. So are they ready to seat people and take the offering and those kinds of things? And if they're not, then I would delay it. But by the time they get there, they're, they're ready to do it. They're, they're, you know, they've been trained, they're ready, and they want to move on to... Um, ushering so but it, it's a great opportunity for them to learn to build a little more of a relationship with the other ushers and um, to learn the different aspects and, of the ministry and things as well um, follow up with them let them know they're not alone uh, if they have any questions be available for them check with them make sure that you know that they're okay with what they're seeing, learning, and, and that they're comfortable with it, and that they're advancing, and they're getting ready to step up into that place of being an usher, and listen to them. Um, they're new. They're, they haven't done this before. Now, you know, all your other ushers, they've been doing it a while, so this new person coming into this position, listen to them. They may have a perspective. They may see something that the rest of you have missed, or just because they're a different individual, they may just have a different perspective that may turn out to be a benefit to your ministry as ushers um, and greeters. So listen to your new guys, see what they've learned and how that can benefit you. And you want them to be as professional as possible because, you know, I serving God and the cause of Christ are important. Um, and so how we conduct ourselves is, should be, rep, it should reflect the importance of that. And so the more professional that we act, I, I just, I believe that, you know, we're just showing, um, 
how important the cause of Christ is and, and serving God. So help them to learn to be professional, train them, stick with them. And anyway, uh, thanks for stopping by tonight. And uh, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, you can reach out to me at akajoebrewer.com. Aka uh, and uh, just click the contact there and um, uh, I'll get a message from you. But uh, thanks again for stopping by and we'll see you next week. Uh, let's pray. Father, once again, we thank you for uh, these folks involved in this ministry. Um, it can be challenging. Um, but it can be quite a blessing and pray that you just bless them and watch over them. Pray that you would use them in the lives of all the folks they come into contact with, protect them, protect them in their churches and keep them safe. But we ask these things in Jesus name. Amen. Have a good night.